Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. We bless the Lord for this day, another privilege that God has given us to come into his house on this Sunday, the fourth Sunday in October, to praise his holy name. Oh, how wonderful it is. Oh, what a privilege it is to be a child of God. Oh, how wonderful it is. And what a privilege it is to be a child of God. Welcome again to each of you, those of you in the sanctuary, in the parking lot, and even out there in social media land. Help us worship and praise the name of our God together this Sunday morning. As a means of call to worship, the psalmist says in the 69th numbers of Psalms, save me. O oh God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. And we serve a God who's able to save us from any situation we are experiencing. Amen. 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 Our ensemble, our brothers are getting ready to bless us this Sunday morning with a selection. Then you will be blessed with a devotion from our deacons. Help us praise God together because the word of God tells us, oh, how wonderful it is. For brethren to, give, to, to dwell together in unity and to praise our God together. Sing along with our ensemble as they prepare to bless us and usher in the spirit of the living God this Sunday morning.
Good morning. Our scripture comes from the 33rd number of Psalms, verse 1 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is calmly for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with psaltery, an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as in heap. He layeth upon the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. May the Lord bless the readers, the doers, and the hearers of his most holy word. This morning, thank you, dear Lord, for giving us this opportunity to be able to come out and praise your holy name. Thank you for watching over us and keeping us. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who came and died for us, that we may have eternal life. We thank you, dear Lord. Please have mercy upon us. Bless this church and the congregation. Bless each and every one that worship in your holy name, whether home or in the sanctuary or in the parking lot. We pray for those. We pray for the one who is not able to move around. We pray for each and every home, every church that stand open in your holy name. We realize that we're living in a world where men and women count your way unholy. And we just pray, dear God, that you have mercy upon us. Realize we're living in a time where sickness and death is all over. And we can't make it without you. Bless, if it be your will. Realize that this life will soon be over after a while. And we want you to meet us and keep us and let us rise on the other side. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen and amen and amen. I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word. I said I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word. Tell you that I've seen, yes I have, to let defeat well have the last word. Tell you that I've seen. I wake up in the morning and I realize 
that I'm still here. That lets me know I got that feeling. No matter what that Mr. T, he brought me things for tomorrow and sorrow. Defeat can't compete with mercy and grace. If I just keep faith, I can win this race. I've seen too many victories to let defeat and the last word. Tell you that I've seen too many yes, I have. to let defeat and the last word. I tell you that I've, I've seen. seen Bye. 
and your participation and prayers up until this point in our worship experience. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, and I don't want to read all of these verses, but there are about 15, 16 verses from 1 Kings, chapter 18, verse 23 through verse 29 that I believe is going to be a blessing to the people of God. So we're going to uh, peruse through this particular passage of scripture and skip over various verses. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning with verse 23, this is what the word of God says, let them therefore give us two bullocks for themselves cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And I will, I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under it and call ye on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord. The God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Skip if you will down verse number 29 where the word of God says and it came to pass when midday was passed and they prophesied unto the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor answer nor any to answer nor any that regarded and Elijah said unto all the people come come near unto me and all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Skip down to verse number 35 and the Bible says and the water ran round about the altar and he filled the trenches also with water. It came to pass at the time in the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said Lord God of Abraham Isaac and of Jacob, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, 
hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Verse 38 says this, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering or the sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And verse 39 says, and when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Good Amen. God Almighty. Amen. I want to tag this text this Sunday morning and tell somebody that God is real. My God from Zion, you ought to look over and tell somebody this Sunday morning, he is real. My God from Zion, God is real. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, story has it that Kenneth Morris, born 1917, died 1989, read two articles in a magazine that was written by two different men. One article, ladies and gentlemen, was written by an atheist who did not believe in God, and the other article was written by a preacher. The atheist, in his article, gave various reasons as to why he did not believe in God. The preacher in his article gave various reasons as to why he did believe in God. And story has it, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that after reading both those articles on that day, story has it that Kenneth Morris stated there was a question that was staring him dead in his face. After reading those two articles, one by an atheist, the other by a preacher, Kenneth Morris stated there was a question staring him dead in his face, and that question was, why did he believe in God? I mean, after all, he had never seen God. He had never touched God. He began to wonder on that day after reading both those articles, why did he believe in God? In the face of scientific evidence brought forth by that atheist in that article, his belief in God seemed futile. His belief in God seemed worthless. His belief in God seemed pointless. And after reading, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, those two articles written by those two men, Kenneth Morris began to wonder why did he believe in God? True story, ladies and gentlemen, and after Kenneth Morris had been diagnosed with tuberculosis after experiencing problems and pain in his life, Morris stated that there was something within him that spoke so clearly like never before and said to him, yes, God is real. Because after he had to deal with tuberculosis after he had problems in his life, after he had perils and predicaments in his life, he realized and recognized uh, that the reason he was still alive was because of the mere fact that God is real. Talk to me somebody and true story that at that very moment, Morris sat down, picked up pen and paper, and began to write that famous song that said, yes, 
God is real because I can feel him in my soul. Anybody heard it before? And somebody in here or somebody out there this Sunday morning, you can testify that you too have discovered without a shadow of a doubt that God is real. I didn't get enough amens. I got to say that again this Sunday morning. Somebody in here or somebody out there in social media land ought to be able to testify without a shadow of a doubt that you know within yourself that God is real. No one can convince to you that he's not no one can convince to you that he's just a false sense in your imagination. Somebody ought to be able to raise your hand and testify that you've experienced for your own doggone self that God is real. Lord have mercy Jesus because, because I come to tell somebody if God is not real who suspend the stars in the sky if God is not real who tells the moon where to hide if God is not real who separates the night from the day if God is not real who regulates the time and seasons if God is not real who puts that baby in the mother's womb if God is not real who woke you up this morning if God is not real who gives you a portion of your health and strength if God is not real who gave you that house to live in if God is not real who gave you that car to drive if God is not real who put the clapping in your hand the jumping in your feet if God is not real who makes you smile smile when you want to frown if God is not real who wipes the tears from your eyes lift your hands and tell somebody God is real I wish I had somebody who was going to raise your hand and testify this Sunday morning that he is real and, and ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters that's what we discover in this pericope this Sunday morning, that's all we discover. In this text this Sunday morning, we discover that God is real and that nothing or nobody can compare to our God. I need to say that again this Sunday morning. We discover in First, Corinth, First Kings, ladies and gentlemen, that, that, that our God is real and that nobody or nothing can compare to our God because when you read the Bible, the text will show you that the scene unfolds as Elijah has been trained and tested in private. I don't have time to go through the history or the life of Elijah, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, but you will discover that the prophet has been trained and tested in private but now the Bible will show you that the prophet is now ready to teach and preach in public. Let me say that again this Sunday morning. You will discover that for three long years, Elijah had been trained and tested in private, but now the Bible will show you that he's now ready to teach and preach in public. And I need to drop this nugget on somebody this Sunday morning when I tell you, hear me, and hear me well when I tell you that you've got to be willing to do some stuff in private before you do it in public. Amen. Come on, help me preach this Sunday. The Bible will show you that Elijah had been trained and tested in private. Now, in this particular chapter, he's now getting ready to preach and teach in public. But before you do anything in public, I come to tell you, you've got to learn how to do that same thing in private. Y'all not feeling me. Let me help you this Sunday morning. Can I just testify this Sunday morning? Some of the best church I've had has been in private. 
Some of the best sermons I preached uh, have been in private. Nobody was around to say amen. Uh, some of the strongest prayers I prayed uh, have been in private uh, because I come to tell you this Sunday morning, uh, the Bible says uh, that what you do in private, uh, the God I serve uh, will reward you openly. Amen. Lift your holy hand this Sunday morning and tell somebody to do it in private. And when you do it in private, God will condition you. God will put you in position so that what you've done in private can be a blessing in public. Amen. That's what happened, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Elijah. He has been trained and tested in private. Now, in 1 Kings, the Bible will show you after three years, he begins or starts his ministry in public. And the Bible will show you now that his ministry has been in public, the Bible says that Elijah now challenges Ahab to a contest on the mount called Calm. And, and the reason this contest, ladies and gentlemen, takes place on Mount Carmel is because they are now getting ready to see who God is real. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this would be a contest uh, between the prophets Baal uh, and of Elijah. Uh, and who would win? Would it be the God above all gods? Uh, or would it be the idol called Baal? Uh, a contest was getting ready to take place. Who would win? Would it be the God of all gods? Uh, the God of Abraham? Uh, the God of Isaac? Uh, the God of Israel, or would it be the God of Baal? Oh, yeah. Tell your neighbor, a contest is getting ready to take place. And I come to serve notice this Sunday morning that because my God is real, because your God is real, the first thing I need to tell somebody this Sunday morning, hear me and hear me well when I tell you with preacher passion uh, that because our God is real, we are able to go up against any situation. I need to say that one more time. Somebody in the back didn't feel me this Sunday morning. Hear me and hear me well, New Mount Zion, ladies and gentlemen. When I tell you, because our God is real, because we serve the realest God. I know that ain't good English, but that's good preaching. Uh, because we serve a real God, uh, I come to serve notice uh, and let somebody up in here, up in here, up in here this Sunday morning know uh, because our God is real. You are able to go up against any situation. I don't care what it may be. Hear me. I need to say it again till I feel it this Sunday morning. Because our God is real. We are able to go up against any situation. Because, because ladies and gentlemen, Elijah says that we're going to settle this once and for all on today. We're going to see whose God is real. Watch what Elijah says, ladies and gentlemen, in verse 23. Elijah says, this is how we're going to see or find out who God is real. He says, in verse 23, he says, let them therefore give us two bullocks. Give us two animals and let them choose one animal for themselves, one bullock for themselves and what you need to do is cut up that bullock, cut up that animal in, into pieces and, and then put some water and some wood, put some wood and don't, don't, don't put no fire under the wood and the bullock. But he said, and, and, and I'm going to dress and I'm going to cut up the other animal, the other bullock and, and lay some wood under the bullock and, and, and I'm not going to put no fire under it uh, but the God uh, that answers by fire uh, the God that sends down fire from heaven uh, we're going to see first and foremost on today whose God is real. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, he 
he challenges, he challenges the prophets of Baal. He challenges the prophets of Baal. And because our God is real, because our God is the realest of all gods, you and I are able to go up against any situation in this life, any problem, any peril, any situation, any person, any dilemma, any predicament, because God is real. You, as a child of God, can go up against any situation. And, and that's a word for somebody who's sick this Sunday morning. I come to tell you, because God is real, you can go up against your sickness. Come on, help me preach this Sunday morning. Because God is real, I come to tell you, your enemy is no match for God. The devil is no match for God. No disease is any match to God. Tell somebody he's real. And he, he challenges, ladies and gentlemen, he challenges the prophet of Baal on this mountain called Carmel. And I like the confidence that Elijah has because the Bible will show you that, that he says to the prophets of Baal, you go first. Yeah. And, and when you know how bad your God is, can I help somebody this Sunday morning? When you are so confident uh, in what your God can do, you don't have to rush the God you serve. Is there anybody here besides Tobiah not ashamed to testify that you don't have to rush the God you serve? I feel my grandmama sneaking up on me. The old folks used to say, you don't have to hurry. God, no, nah, he's a God. You've got to wait. You've got to trust him. You've got to give him time. No matter how long it takes. Why? Because he's a God. You can't hurry. He'll be there. Don't you worry. And he may not come when you want him to. But hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He's right. I'm going to tell your neighbor, you go first. Amen. That's what Elijah did. Elijah says, now, you, you, you believe your God is real. I know my God is real. He says, but, but, but for the sake of, of me being kind and courteous, he says, you go first. All right. and, and he says, listen, when you go first, you, you call on your God and see if he answers by fire. And he says, now, when you go first, Notice, if you will, the Bible will show you their prayer. Because, because the Bible says, and I wish I had time to read that whole chapter. The Bible says that the prophets of Baal prayed long prayers. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. The Bible says they prayed long prayers uh, trying to get their God's attention. Tell your neighbor, they prayed a long time. Matter of fact, matter of fact, they prayed so long that the text says, the Bible says that, that they prayed from morning to noon. Yeah. Yeah. They prayed a long time. They, they prayed from morning to noon, but can I tell you what I've discovered? Can I tell you what I've discovered in my life? I, I've discovered that because my God is real and, and because I serve the realest of all gods, I've discovered that it's not how long you pray. Uh, it's about how strong you pray. Come on, help me preach this Sunday morning. It's not how long you pray, uh, but it's to whom you pray. Uh, the Bible says uh, that the prophets of Baal prayed from morning to noon, uh, and their gods uh, didn't answer their prayer. Yeah. I feel like preaching this Sunday morning. Not only, not only do we see their prayers, but, but watch the text. The Bible will show you their prayers, but it will also show you their performance. What? Lord have mercy, Jesus. Yeah. The text is tailored to teach you this Sunday morning that, that the prophets of Baal, they prayed, but they also had a performance. Don't, don't, don't miss this, ladies and gentlemen, because you see it right there 
in verse number 26 because the Bible said that they, they, they started to jump around and leap on the altar. The prophets of Baal, they put some drama in their performance. They, they, they put some drama in their prayers. Okay. But I need to tell somebody this Sunday morning. I need to tell somebody on my way to heaven, hear me and hear me well when I tell you that your drama or your performance will not move God to answer your prayer. Amen. Amen. Come on, talk to me somebody. I need to say that one more time to somebody say, you right preacher. Your drama and your performance does not have anything or has very little to do with the God we serve answering your prayers. Amen. Somebody ought to shout amen, preacher. Somebody ought to type that on the screen this Sunday morning because I come to tell you, you can turn over the pews. You can jump around the church. You can holler and shout. You can walk around with your hands lifted high. Talk to me somebody. You can shed tears after tears. But if you're not walking right, if you're not living right, if you're not praying right, if you're not serving right, I come to tell you that it's merely a performance. Matter of fact, you ought to look over and tell somebody this Sunday morning, stop performing. If you're not ashamed, you ought to point to somebody and tell them God don't need no drama in the church. He don't need any performance on the church. This is not a TV show. You're not an actor or actress. Talk to me somebody because God is real. He's looking for some real folks. Not only. I done been too long this Sunday morning. Not only, not only will you discover that because our God is real, this is going to bless somebody. Because our God is real, you're able to go up against any situation. But watch this. This is going to bless you. Because God is real, you're able to get the victory over the situation. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. Because God is real. Elijah will show you that you're able to go up against any situation, but then Elijah will show you that you're able to get the victory over the situation. I, I like this, ladies and gentlemen, if you look, if you look real quickly, I believe right around verse number 30, uh, the Bible says, look what happens around verse number 30. The Bible says that after Elijah mocked them, after Elijah laughed at them for their drama and their performance after he told them maybe your God is asleep, maybe your God is on vacation, maybe your God took some PTO, some time off from work, maybe your God is, is, is somewhere on the east coast or the west coast, maybe your God is having a good time in, in Vegas. He said, he said, now that you see that your God has not answered, uh, Elijah said, just, just give me a little room. Talk to me, somebody. He said, he said, give me a little room. Uh, give me a little time. Uh, and let me show you uh, that the God I serve, uh, he is real. Amen. Amen. Notice if you will, ladies and gentlemen. Let me cut this up. Notice if you will. Amen. Uh, Elijah says, now, you're able to get the victory over the situation. Notice, if you will, the first thing Elijah did was he gave them an invitation. Because he says in verse number 30, if you read it correctly, he gives them an invitation because he says to them, he said to the people, come near unto me. You, you see it, don't you? He says, come near to me so that you can see what God is getting ready to do. Not only, not only does Elijah give them an invitation, if I had time, I would tell you, not only was there an invitation, but the Bible will show you there was also restoration. 
Because, because the Bible says that when they jumped on the altar, when they were acting a fool uh, and jumping, climbing on the altar, trying to get their God attention, the Bible said they broke the altar and then Elijah had to restore the altar because the Bible said that he repaired the altar that was broken. Not only was there an invitation, not only was there a restoration, uh, I think I need to tell you there was also formation. Because, because the Bible said that Elijah, uh, he took the 12 stones uh, according to the number of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, the Bible will show you uh, that was an invitation, uh, that was restoration, uh, that was formation. Uh, but I think I need to tell you there was also saturation. Preach to buy I'm trying to help somebody this Sunday morning because watch this. I'm almost done this Sunday morning because just so that they would know that no tricks were involved, just so they know that no magic was being done, just so they would know that God can do all things and cause water or fire to come down from heaven. The Bible says that it Elijah told the people uh, to saturate the wood and water, uh, saturate the bullock and water. Uh, he said, now you can even uh, build some trenches around uh, the sacrifice. Uh, he said, now I'm going to show you uh, that my God is real. Uh, you can take four barrels of water, uh, pour water on the wood, uh, pour water on the sacrifice, uh, do it one time for the Father, do it two times for the Son, do it three times for the Holy Spirit. They soak the wood in water, they soak the sacrifice in water. But guess what? Victory was getting ready to take place. Victory was getting ready to show up because the Bible says that all of a sudden Elijah started to pray. God showed up, He answered that prayers uh, because fire came down from heaven. You ought to tell somebody, I'm done this Sunday morning, you ought to tell somebody that he will show up. If you're not ashamed, I'm done. Help me close this sermon this Sunday morning and tell somebody that if you call him right, if you pray right, if you halfway try to live right, when you call on the name of God, I'm a living witness that the God I serve, he will show up. Amen. Tell somebody this Sunday morning, he will show up. How, how do you know? I know you're asking me the question, preacher. Pastor, how do you know he will show up? The reason I know that he will show up because there is no other God but one. Come on, help me preach this Sunday morning. There is only one God. He is Lord of Lord. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Yahweh. He's the living and true God. All other gods are false. They are non-existent. They won't help you when you need it. They are powerless. They can't answer your prayers. They don't even hear your prayers. But lift your holy hands and and tell somebody that God is real. I'm done this Sunday morning because that's why the Bible says uh, that he's Alpha, uh, he's Omega, uh, he's the beginning, uh, he's the end, uh, he is which was, uh, he is his, uh, he's evermore. Tell somebody that God is real. I wish I had four more people and i make five uh, and we'll tear this church up this Sunday morning. Uh, is there anybody here not ashamed to testify? You've called him for yourself. Uh, you pray to him for yourself. Uh, he's rocked you to sleep at night. Uh, he's dried your weeping eye. Lift your hands uh, and tell somebody that God is real. Anybody, I feel my help this Sunday morning. Anybody here not ashamed to praise him this Sunday morning because he's real? Anybody here not ashamed to testify that you feel him in your heart? You feel him in your soul? 
some things uh, you may not know. Uh, I don't know much history. In the, I don't know much biology. In the, I don't know much calculus. Uh, I don't know how to speak Hebrew. Uh, I don't know how to speak in Spanish. Uh, but one thing that I know without a shadow of a doubt uh, is the God I serve. He is real. Well, my brothers and sisters, uh, somebody needs to know. Uh, somebody needs to know that uh, the God we serve, uh, uh, he is real. Somebody, Lord, help me this Sunday morning. Somebody needs to rejoice. Uh, somebody needs uh, to praise his name uh, because uh, the God we serve, uh, uh, he is real. And uh, the reason uh, I know he's real uh, is because uh, I feel uh, his Holy Spirit. Is anybody not ashamed to testify this Sunday morning that every now and then you feel his Holy Spirit? And somebody, somebody, Lord help me, somebody can testify that when you were going through, nobody, 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 Lord help me, nobody, nobody, but the God we serve, he carried you through. And because uh, God uh, is real, uh, you can handle uh, or you can go against uh, in any situation. I come to tell somebody uh, because uh, the God I serve is real, uh, you can have uh, the victory uh, over any situation. You wanna, you wanna lift your hands uh, and tell somebody uh, that uh, victory it is mine. Is there anybody uh, not ashamed uh, to testify that uh, victory uh, it is yours? Uh, because uh, the songwriter says uh, victory uh, it is mine because uh, I told the devil uh, to get behind. You ain't anybody uh, not ashamed uh, to tell somebody that uh, every now and then uh, you talk to the devil. I wish I had somebody who was going to help me close this Sunday morning. You ain't anybody uh, not ashamed uh, to tell somebody that uh, every now and then uh, you talk to the devil uh, and uh, you tell the devil uh, that the God I serve uh, has given uh, me the victory. Uh, you tell uh, the devil that uh, the God I serve uh, has given me power. You tell, you tell, uh, go ahead and tell the devil uh, that uh, the God I serve uh, has given me authority. Uh, and uh, Elijah will show you uh, that because God is real, uh, you show the fable uh, to go against any situation. Uh, because God is real, uh, you are able to get the victory. Uh, over your situation uh, but thirdly and finally uh, because the God I serve uh, because the God I serve uh, because the God I serve is real uh, the God I serve uh, uh, he will get the victory uh, and he will get the glory uh, over your situation uh, somebody said preaching uh, how do you know uh, the God we serve uh, Oh, we'll get the glory uh, because the Bible says uh, the 
the Bible says, uh, the Bible says uh, in verse 39, uh, the people, they began to say uh, that the God you serve, uh, he is the God. Uh, the God you serve, uh, uh, he is real. Uh, uh, lift your holy hands uh, and tell somebody uh, uh, he is real. If you're not ashamed, uh, uh, tell somebody uh, the God I serve, uh, uh, he is real. Uh, somebody say, preach him, uh, uh, how do you know it? Uh, can I tell you how uh, I know he's real? Uh, because can't nobody uh, uh, do me like Jesus came. I said, can't nobody, I said, can't nobody, I said, can't nobody, can't nobody do me like God can. And there ain't anybody out there, I'm not ashamed to testify, he is real. There ain't anybody out there uh, not ashamed to rejoice uh, because the God we serve, uh, uh, he is real. Uh, he is real. I say he's real. Say yeah. Say Can I bless somebody? I don't care what you are going through. God is real and he has the power to answer by fire. And I like this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm done this Sunday morning. The Bible says the prophets of Baal prayed a long time. Morning to noon had drama, had performance, but guess what happened? Their God didn't answer. And I like what Elijah did. If I had time, I would tell you that when Elijah prayed, he said, God, according to your word. He says, according to your word, let these people know that you are the greatest God that ever was. I don't know about you ladies and gentlemen, but I've searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Look high, look low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater. Than the God of all God. Tell somebody he's real. And every now and then, when you are going through and you have those experiences like Elijah, you've got to remind yourself, yes! Yes! God is real. And if God, if God showed himself, thank you, Holy Ghost. If God showed himself on Mount Carmel, I believe that he would surely show himself at Mount Zion. Somebody just missed that. If God revealed who he was on Mount Carmel, then surely he's able to reveal himself. The doors of the church are open. Come on. Those little church opens. Amen. Maybe there's somebody here this Sunday morning who, who's been wondering if God was real. Listen, we settled it once and for all on today. He is real. And you know what I'm gonna do? Because he's real, I'm gonna make sure that I continue to hold to his unchanging hand. Can I tell you what I'm gonna do? 
because he's real. I'm going to make sure that I continue to hold to God's unchanging hand. Anybody here besides Tobias, not ashamed to testify, you're going to hold to his hand. And the reason you're going to do it is because he's real. If you believe that this Sunday morning, sing with us our closing song, Hold to God's unchanging hand. And we're going to get out of here this Sunday morning. But you ought to tell somebody he's real. Come on, tell somebody he is real. Come on, let me hear you. Let me hear you. Oh, no. Trust in him who will not leave you. Now is the appointed time unto salvation. Who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring. Whatsoever years may bring. If by earthly, if by earthly brings this Sunday morning, reminding us that because you are real, we don't have to be afraid to challenge situations. We don't have to be afraid to challenge people. Because you are real, we don't have to be afraid to challenge predicaments because we know that you can go up against anything. We know that you can give us the victory. And ultimately, we know that all glory belongs to you. Because when it's all said and done, man will cry out. Man would fall down on bending knees, worship you, praise you, because you are God. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide with this down people now, henceforth and forever. Let us all respond together by saying amen, 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 amen. and amen. Come on, anybody know he's real this Sunday morning? And that's why you ought to not hang on, but hold on. Tell somebody to keep holding on. Mm -hmm. Everybody ought to hold.
Pastor Tobias, a teacher, a mentor, and shepherd with love, sent by God from up above. You've showed us Jesus. You've taught us the way. By being an example of Christ's love each and every day, you are a teacher in all that you do, always pointing to Jesus through and through. You are a mentor we look to in trials. You send us to Jesus to walk the tough mile. You know that he is the answer always. And send us to him to get through the haze. Pastor Tobias, you are a shepherd by tending your sheep. Some frightened, some worn, some tattered, some weak. You always care and help us to find contentment and joy in Jesus divine. So we wander away from the rest of the flock. You seek to find and lead back to the rock. You sought his will and carried your cross by teaching his sheep so there would be no loss. One day, in heaven, Pastor, you hear Jesus say, Well done, my servant. This humbly I pray. On behalf of the entire membership of New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, we want you to know that you are appreciated and loved. <laughs> 